Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, today this is messages from your shadow self. <clears throat> I went back and forth between titles and how we were going to do it and what we were going to do, but then in the midst of a conversation, this came to mind. So for group one, we have release. For group two, we have purification. And for group three, we have reflection. And I think we're just going to, okay, they want us to pull cards as we go, but I've got these cards here really quick for group one, protest, start a revolution, group two, bitch fire, stand up for yourself, and group three is evil queen, you deserve sugar, not salt. Okay, so interesting enough, I just released a pick a card, messages from your higher self, and look. These two cards were uh, part of the pick card on the visual side of things. So if you haven't seen that, you might want to go back and watch that as well. There could be something for you if you're really drawn to do so, okay? But we'll be back with group one. Hello, group one. So you chose the release card, or maybe you were going by this one, protest, start a revolution, but obviously I feel like Maybe you're questioning what needs to be released or what have you yet to release. Or you've just you're in the middle of going through a releasing. Well, you get you get the idea, right? Past, present, or future also could not only be talking about you, but people and situations around you, okay? Mirror is coming to mind also. And the, okay, so for someone, I feel like there might be a situation that you don't think pertains to you. You think it has to do with somebody else. But in all honesty, it has every bit to do with you, maybe. Mm. Okay, so the book meaning for this is you've been looking around and noticing that the world is often unjust. But you're not sure what to do about it. Like Katniss, you need to be the first spark of your own revolution. Educate yourself. Stand up for yourself. Don't forget to stand up for others whether or not you have shared experiences. If you can speak up and do so safely, then do it. And I feel like that's talking about, like maybe there's, I'm just going to give an example. Like your kid is yaw yawing about somebody at school and they don't have really nice things to say about that person. And, you know, in all honesty, don't get me wrong, they could have been, you know, not very nice to your kid anyways. But... They, uh, where were we going with that spirit? Okay, sorry. I had to light my incense and my little candle here. But there's a feeling of stepping in when you know something isn't right. Speaking up for those who either don't have the ability to speak up for themselves or, you know, trying to see it from a uh, clearer perspective. Of course, we're not going to go into perspectives and shit right now because that's usually always a message. Just to see it from a different view. Let's see what we've got. So, let's get a couple of cards here to get a better storyline for you, group one, okay? What does group one's shadow self mess? What messages do they have? Thank you for giving us clear, concise messages. Spirit. One, two, three. No, there's a fourth one. Okay, the one on the bottom. Let's see here. We have obedience. Move over. Ugh obedience chaos rigid and love let's put you down here why is there so much crap on my table okay it's <laughs> like little crusties on here and I'm like <gasps> wipe that off a lot I guess it's just this So I feel like there's like this very, okay, and we even have the card rigid here, but I, I was going to say a very rigid sense of structure 
and by the book or like uh, a stickler for the rules is coming to mind. What the hell is that? There's a black little floaty over here. What are you? Hello? See this thing on the black into my fingertip? It was floating around in the air. It was an ash. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. <laughs> That's really cool. So we're going to get some more clarity cards here. But I feel like this is what's going on right now. Like, maybe somebody here isn't really needing to release that by the book aspect and get out of this mental chatter this is what's going on in the head and that rigid structure but what we really need to be is down in the heart what is our heart telling us and maybe that's what you're starting a revolution on is uh the call answering the call to lead from the heart we've got revenge Triumph of Lies, Black Flower Fragrance, Black Dahlia comes to mind when that card comes out, and Queen of My World. Okay, just give me a minute to set here. I'm actually going to pause it. I'm going to mull these cards over and try to get, because I want clear, concise messages for you. Hold one moment, please. <coughs> okay, as I'm looking at this card, and it's under Rigid. And the book meaning for this card, and I don't know why I can't remember it because I've had to look it up several times what the book meaning is, but the world is unfair. Fuck off, dear world, and fuck you. If we want to go dark, go black. Don't stop to the evening, but embrace the night. And this is at night right here, but it says rigid. So it's, oh, yeah. Needing to embrace the shadow aspect, the shadow self, I think is what's needing to happen here. Embrace the darkness, embrace the night. And we've got chaos going on here. This could be a triumph of lies. You could have been told many lies. You could be telling yourself lies about yourself. Um, I feel like it's pertaining to a situation, though, that's around. Remember in the beginning how I said... That it, you might not feel like it's about you. You might think it's about someone else. But in all honesty, it is about yourself. And it's strange. She's got a swords in her hand. And she's got swords in her hands. So the need to cut something away. But it's like an armor that's up. A very defensive armor. Okay, hold on. Not all that glitters is gold. Emptiness is felt when there is nothing under the dress. The triumph of lies is about appearance. And appearance is always so important in the world. Day by day it seems more important. Can that be a lie too? We seek to be what the world outside desires and not necessarily society at large. Our family or partners or friends place judgments on what we should be. And the dress we choose, we carve a mask of expectations, behaviors, and values. So I feel like what you guys are releasing are those preconceived ideas of how you think people around you want you to be. And there was a pretty powerful, I felt this on, on uh, a meme on Facebook. And it said, stop expecting you out of everybody. Just because you have an opinion of like, well, I would do it like this if I were you, but they're not you. And we all have different ways of seeing things, different thought perspective, pers different thinking patterns. Wanting to exact revenge on those who lied to you and did you wrong. And I get it, but that's not the best way to go about it, right? We're supposed to be going ill, no ill will or harm to none. I feel like this situation here, though, is a, uh, a relationship situation. It's like... The obedience card, like, maybe your ego is really trying to tell you, like, we should abide by law, we should abide by the rules and the guidelines, 
but honestly there's no real guidelines you know as long as you're following from your heart and you're leading from your heart and you have good intentions you know things always happen for the highest and best good of everybody even if it's chaotic or a little dark We've got house and we've got concern. So I feel like it's somebody in your household. And if you're not concerned about any of anyone in your household, maybe you need to look it over and get concerned. I'm not sure though. Hold on. Okay, I had to get up and tell my dog to shut up. But what, as soon as I sat down, what came to mind is that there's an expectation of somebody in the house. Remember how I said, stop expecting you out of everybody? Well, if it was me, I would have done this. If it was me, I, I would have done that. Or they should have known such and, you know. And I feel like there's a change coming up. This could be what you're releasing is that thinking pattern. Hold on. Yeah, there's an ending coming to it. And... Like, it's like maybe you're focusing all your energy on that specific person in the household. And this doesn't even necessarily have to be in your house. It's it's your close circle, I feel. It's not just an acquaintance or just a someone you say hi to every now and then at work, okay? I'm going to try to get more out here. So there was a message that came through the other day about we do worry about friends and family and that's that's really kind hearted of us right but some instances we can't control situations things are out of our hands and sometimes the, only, the best thing to do is just to release and to know that they will do what they are supposed to do in due timing it's not your burden to bear Think outside the box. Cord cutting is coming to mind here. So maybe someone performed cord cutting not long ago. This chaos though over here and this card, which is basically fuck the world card, you know. There is a lot of chaos ensuing in the world right now. But we can't control that. And honestly... It has, it's not affecting us. We're only letting it affect us. And it has nothing to do with us. We, we, my heart goes out to those in Ukraine and everything that's happening with that aspect and any, any other thing that's going on in the world, because not just Ukraine, there are several, several, several things, shitty things that are going on in the world right now that we don't even know about, right? Until they want to, you know, make a story out of it. So they keep our minds off of certain things, but this is not... This keeps taking different turns here. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to get out my little cards. My little cards! Where the hell are they? Hold on. I don't know what I'm doing here. It's my first day. It's my first day. Okay. I'm giving you the finger here. Warning you of a problem either now or in the near future, but look here This is outcoming look we're just gonna put these cards Put down here get out of my freaking way This is coming over the revenge card, okay And oh wow this story is coming out okay so of course if it's shadow self there's gonna be some tough love here my dear so there's a trigger warning coming up i feel but i remember in earlier i said you could be thinking it's going on or something's going on for somebody else but in reality it's really you like maybe whomever you're thinking oh you need to do this she really or he really needs to do that you need to heal this you need to release you need to acknowledge your trauma or whatever 
But they're a mirror to you, honey. They're a fucking mirror to you. And it's on... It's you, okay? But you're finger pointing to other people. And it's like... There's no reason to exact a vin revenge. The only person you have to blame in this situation is yourself. But you're blinded to something. You're blinded to some kind of truth here. That's what the swords for me represent usually is truth. Especially in the tarot. And then we've got triumph of lies here. And earlier when that card came out, I felt like maybe somebody was lying to themselves about something. So it's like... Hard denial, which is causing a lot of chaos. Let's get another card for this next section. Cutting cords, this fucking scissors, disappointment in some affair, okay? So, in my experience, I've done a lot of cord cuttings. And for like, say for my ex, for instance, I had to do a cord cutting several times because there were so many cords that was attached between us that were negative from each exchange, each argument, each, each cycle that we went through. And every time, you know, it was always had something to do with giving us some sort of internal chaos, right? So I feel like this is someone, um, you, you need to cut your cords again. It, it has to happen again. You, you might have to do it several times over. I'm hearing three to seven times. And that's funny because this card 16 is number seven and 30 is three. So let's move on this. Fuck the world right now, right? Woman. Dealing a relationship with a woman. This could be a mother figure. Maybe your mom growing up was very strict and very rigid, very by the book. Okay, or maybe it was your dad too, because we've got the gentleman card here. Maybe it was an older brother figure or a parental figure, a grandfather or something. Could have been a previous husband or wife. Authority figures come to mind too. The priest card came out, so I feel like we're not going to point fingers. Let's say, for example, it is mom here. You're not going to point fingers here because she was just going by what she thought was supposed to go. Um, how she thought was by the book. Maybe she was very religious or, you know, there were certain scriptures that she really uh, went by or devoted herself to. There's a sense of needing to have compassion here for the situation and the person, okay? And love. <laughs> compassion and love. And we've got the love card here as well, too. <clears throat> the truth. And look, she's holding a mirror, honey. She's holding a mirror. There's one more card here. But don't let it take away your sense of empowerment, okay? Okay. All right, we're going to this situation right here. Very soon, clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. So whatever it is you're wanting in this love situation, okay? The type of person you want in your life. Following the heart instead of the mind. Oh my gosh, that's what I said, right? Earlier, too much mental chatter. We need to drop down in our heart center. But there's something here, you know, clearly decide what you want in the situation so that it comes to you now. Do not waver upon it and do not have any form of doubt within you on what you're wanting okay don't doubt that it'll don't doubt that it will come to you because then it won't the witching hour it's time for something though it's time for something and we we're talking about speaking truth over here right
It is safe for you to be powerful. You know how to be powerful in a loving way that benefits yourself as well as others. I'm going to get the book, the release of this book. In many areas of the world, deciduous trees prepare for the winter and conserve their energy. Wait, I'm not going to read all that. Hold on. Now is the time to let anything in your life fall away that is no longer useful or needed for the emerging expression of who you are. Allow yourself to gradually shed what has become burdensome and no longer congruent with your soul's purpose. Conserve your energy by allowing yourself more rest while at the same time making preparations for the winter season. Look especially at your material possessions and be brutally honest with yourself as you discern which of these can be given away or somehow released. And we've got the house card here, so out with the old in with the new right consider shedding relationships that have served their purpose and are no longer viable as well as work or job that has become devoid of interest and passion just like the trees that openly bear their nakedness once their leaves have departed and give room for whatever new life is ready to birth following a period of quiet and gestation so let go of whatever has outlived its purposefulness and trust that something else will take its place so there's a sense of as i'm reading this there's a sense of needing to let go of the action of revenge. There's a sense of needing to let go of blaming others for our downfalls and our demise, right? Following the heart instead of the mind. And we can't keep blaming because our parents only parented us to the best of their abilities, to the best that they knew how. And sure, there might have been a lot of lacking things, significant lack in some significant very important areas that would have molded you and shaped yourself we can't keep blaming though so there maybe maybe there's cord cutting that needs to be done with the parental figure um you can do negative cord cutting removals because we we don't only just have negative cords attached to us from other people we have positive cords as well and there is a sense of you don't have to cut all cords. You can just cut those negative ones. And especially for some that passed, that stemmed over from a past life. Stop withholding communication in the matter. Be open about how things made you feel or how they make you feel about things. You know, if this is, if they're causing this inside of you and you're not speaking your truth, but yet you're still pointing fingers. The only person you have to blame is yourself because you didn't stand up. You didn't stand up for yourself. And this is the only way you're going to get justice upon yourself is speaking your truth towards this person that caused you a lot of grief and sorrow. That is all I have for group one. Your shadow self would like for you to stop withholding communication, to stand up for yourself. Don't point fingers. Cut the negative cords that need to be cut. It's okay. And even if you feel like that's all they had in the relationship were negative cords, well, be that as it may, okay? There's no sense. You know, just like we, we have friends growing up and when they're, they're kind of negative and they don't want to... <clears throat> support you or understand where you're coming from in your time of chaos um you know it's okay to cut those cords it's okay to remove ourselves from their energy for a while or indefinitely you know and also there's a, need, a sense of needing to let somebody know that it's okay to forgive too once you cut those cords though it's like it's like someone's um, feeling like once you cut those cords, there's no going back. But essentially, then what's the point of forgiveness? Like, there's a different aspect needing to be looked at there, okay? Um, you could be done for the next three weeks. You could be done for the next three months. You could be done with this person for three years. But if later on, they somehow come back to you or cross your path again, it's okay, there's not, just because there was negative cords that were cut does not mean that has to be one and done and that's it. That's not my belief system anyhow. Because if we say, oh, 
one and done and that's it there's no going back then what's the point of learning the process of forgiveness maybe there's something there that um, you need to forgive on yourself there's something still in the heart center that needs to be cut I see these little threads over here like this is a gift and those little cords need to be cut for you it's the process of forgiving They say, you know, oh, I can forgive, but I won't forget. Then you're not truly forgiving. If you can't forgive and forget, then you're not truly forgiving the situation. You're keeping that chaos within you, energetically on the situation. The cord can be cut, but there's a sense of, you know, with love, going back to love, having integrity for the situation, having integrity for yourself, having integrity for them. Anyone involved? All right. That's all I got for you, group. One. Holy cow. We were on that for a minute, weren't we? All right, dears. Love and light. Hi, group two. For those of you that chose the rain or purification card. And then we also have bitch fire. Stand up for yourself. Number 16 or number seven. The book meaning on here, I'm going to read that out loud to us real quick, okay? Purifying your mind, body, and spirit is the task that is put before you. Purify your mind by identifying a prominent belief you carry about yourself that inhibits you from being fully engaged in life, from showing up 100% of the time. Purify your heart by allowing yourself to breathe in and out blessings and forgiveness so that you can love even more deeply. And I feel like that's what this is. You are holding the key to the ignition of the light inside your heart and either this is already activated for you or this is fixing to happen for you after this purification process um, a lot of grieving a lot of sadness crying um, any form of crying and sometimes we even cry when we're oh so happy and so joyful and grateful too right so it doesn't always have to stem from those lower vibrational emotions but you are indeed the only one who holds the key, who holds the answer for you to help heal yourself. There are no outside influences that are going to help you. Purify your heart by allowing yourself to breathe in and out blessings and forgiveness so that you can love even more deeply. Let yourself feel your grief, truly feel it, so that the rivers of your tears become miniature baptisms that help heal the wounds in your soul. Wow. Okay. If necessary, detoxify your body. The temple and seat of the soul by changing your diet, doing a cleanse for a few days, or simply drinking more water. Increasing the daily amount of water you drink with deep appreciation for its purpose will revitalize your spirit. And I swear on everything that I have that that is true. I drink my water and I'm like, this is my life force energy. This sustains me. This gives me energy. Staying hydrated is so fueling for the mind, body, and soul. It is detrimental. Just as, as detrimental as it is to get grounded, the need to stay hydrated is very, very essential with us humans and our physical vessels because it just helps our mind, body, and spirit work together a little easier. If you're depriving yourself of hydration, then your body goes into the state of Oh, it can put your body into a state of anger and depression. Your physical symptoms. It is no wonder that in some indigenous languages, water is called life blood. Oh my gosh, and I just said I call it my life force energy. Holy cow. As it is so essential to every form of life on earth. Take time to purify yourself. Group two. I'm finally starting to get my mojo back. And it, I, group one is always a warm up for me. But let's see what else we've got for you, my loves. This too shall pass, I know. Clear, concise, and accurate messages from their shadow self, please. Angels, spirits, and guides. Clear, concise, accurate messages from their spirit side, their shadow self. All right. One, two, three. Please keep in mind this could pertain to your past, your present, or your potential near future. 
and also could not only be talking about you but situations and scenarios around you as well we've got downcast pride oh yeah i won't cry for you blinded to the pain and fragmentation so um if you're thinking, if you were wondering about like, oh, what kind of chakra cleanse should I do next? What kind of meditation? Uh, calling back your soul. And I think you could find some meditations talking about fragmentation there. That it takes you through a Reiki energy healing process and brings back pieces of your soul from previous lifetimes. Not just this lifetime and previous relationships. Have you ever been in a relationship with somebody and you're just like, you know, yeah, they broke me, but I felt like they, they broke a piece of me or I left a piece of myself with them. Good or bad, right? Let me lighten this up for you a little bit. Those cards are really dark. And oddly enough, I've got I won't cry for you and it's right over the word laugh. So the things that you don't want to cry over, you might be... Having a very dark sense of humor on the matter. Humor could be something that you do. Like humor may be something when you're nervous. It's just like a like a nervous tick for you to make inappropriate um, <laughs> comments or jokes at that time. But it's just how that's just your coping me mechanism group too. And there's a sense of I won't cry for you because it's going to downcast your pride. You've got too much pride in something here. She's got roots going over her. We've got the earth here. I swear I feel like this. I visited this place in a dream one time. Uh, in a lot of my dreams I visit water sources. So you might be dreaming about water a lot. And there could be something you're grieving over. You're not really sure why you feel so sad about something. And it's because there are literal pieces of you missing. Okay. You see these flies here and they're over these wounds. Like, this is like all those cuts, those pieces, like each time somebody broke you or made you feel really down about yourself, it cut you. I'll be right back. All right, so <clears throat> I had to get some water and take a potty break <laughs> in case you saw the camera jump. But as I was getting up to go to the restroom, this card fell on the floor. You will find peace in this. And where you will find your peace is after you acknowledge this and you let that flow. You let it out. This purification process, your shadow self wants to let you know that it is your road to peace. Okay? This has to happen in order. It's balancing out in the grand scheme of things. Okay. Okay. Get some more clarity cards here. And this could be the fragmentation inner child came to mind as well. So there's, I've noticed in the past couple of months, my ego, my higher self, and my inner child. There's three of us. That's three in this vessel, okay? And you might actually be hearing arguments or like struggling be between listening like, Right brain, left brain, yes or no. Like, you're really struggling to, uh, uh, oh, should we go right or left? And then we're going to go left. Oh, no, 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 let's go right. But what if something happens if we go left? You know, it's like a continuous cycle of things. Individuality. The name Zoe is there. But our ego, our inner child, and our higher selves. I feel like they're all three different aspects of ourselves. And they're all three needing to be healed, plus our physical vessel, right? And then there's our shadow self as well. The shadow self is like, hey, I'm, I'm here too. The shadow self is just that bitch fire. <laughs> um, and you know, going back on some of my TikToks, there's been times where, and I really would like to apologize for anybody that I had ever offended because... There are days where my ego is way fucking louder than my inner child and my higher self. And my ego is not always nice. She she can be a bitch. And she comes across as really mean and ugly sometimes. But I still have to love her. I still have to hold compassion for myself. 
And that's all that matters is that I'm, you know, we hold compassion and love for ourselves and we understand ourselves and we, we don't worry if other people are judging us for our downfalls at that time. If we have downfalls and those people around us can't still support and try to see the lighter side of things for us, too many differences, then maybe we don't need them in our lives until they finish their healing process, right? Or get a little acclimated. We've got black and white here. Yeah, like I said, right or wrong, yes or no. Wow. High Priestess of Earth. Um, okay, so blinded to the pain. This could be for if you're an Earth sign. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. And that is Sun, Moon, or Rising. I feel like Moon is really prominent here for a Capricorn placement. Capricorn Moon? Or an Earth Moon, sorry. And remember how I pointed to this card and I mentioned something about your inner child? And then we've got Playful. This card came out last night for my kiddos. And to me, it signified inner child. Because your inner child likes to be playful. But it's in reverse and it's card number 44. You're not letting it play. You're not letting your inner child play. You're downcasting that inner child's pride. Ooh, goodness. You might own some black and white kitties. There's that moon again, though. You might be seeing the crescent moon a lot. Paying attention to the moon phases, waxing and waning crescent. I'm not sure what it's in right now. But it's like all of them are trying to work together to get this some semblance of peace. And once you realize that there are a lot of different aspects to healing, there's a lot of different lines, a lot of different sources, inner child, higher self, ego. It's okay though, you're getting there. Your shadow self is like, you're doing excellent, but there's still this something, this key. Look, I mentioned key at the beginning. You are the only one that has the key. You have the key to your happiness and you have the key to your own demise. It is up entirely to you on how you choose to let people make you feel. You can't point fingers. If somebody made you feel real shitty about a situation when you weren't intending to be shitty, there's a need for acceptance, but also communication on that note. There's two cards in this deck that are gentlemen. One is white. He's Caucasian. And then we have the African American. So this could be to do with a kiddo, a brother, you know, some sort of masculine energy in your life right now. There's this needing, this sense of needing to find their own individuality. And un, unbeknownst to us, we have... We're unintentionally conditioning our children <laughs> on things. We're unintentionally conditioning our things to see right or wrong, bad or good, yes or no. goosebumps Woo! the solution is not far away though okay so I feel like for somebody here in this situation that the solution is not far away and it's okay to release on that and to know that whatever happens is going to happen for the betterment of the people in the situation okay we also have 222 two, two here and we've got 9 and 44 and 11 33 and 10 I'm all about the numbers you guys might not be but I am <laughs> anything else for group 2 it's like there's something that someone's holding back to do with their childhood that they're not wanting to cry. They don't want to admit and they're like, fuck that. I won't give them the time of day. I won't give them the satisfaction and letting them know that they made me want to cry or hurt myself. But in all honesty, you're still creating through the ashes of it. Sometimes the only way out of the fire is straight through it. Yeah. 
Now there's an ending to the situation. There's an ending to having so many differences with this person. But if we don't communicate and we don't speak on how situations or things made us feel, then that's that's not fair to the other person because it's not giving the other person a chance to explain their side of things. I'm like, you know, sometimes people are really mean and hateful and they do want to make you feel like shit by yourself. But for the most part, in my experience, people are coming from a way different point of view than what I, I thought, than what I was assuming they were coming from, okay? All right, false person coming over the priestess of earth. Like It's like either there's something you're still hiding or you're not wanting to acknowledge about yourself or the person in the situation. And then we've got poverty. Inner child comes to mind and that's coming over the playful card, right? You're stressing your inner child out, my love. This isn't a message from your shadow self group too anymore. It's a message from your inner child. But once you release and you go through this, there's going to be, I don't feel like this is monocle. Monocle is the I thing, right? Monetary value. I feel like there's something so worth so much more than that monetary value. And it's an emotional peace, an emotional fulfillment. What else we got? Anything else in this deck? Okay, they direct me to this set over here. So let's see what we got. See what we got. Come here, card. Protect your energy. Get grounded. Protect your energy. Cleanse. Purify. Because you are a healer. You're the only one that has the ability and the key to heal yourself, okay? Say, for instance, this person that you're feeling some type of way from your childhood, if they were to come up to you and say, hey, I realized I did this, this, and this to you, and I would like to ask for your forgiveness, would that really help you? Would that really help you? Is that the key you need? In all honesty, the key is that you have is the sense of forgiveness, whether they can apologize or not, right? And if you have the opportunity, speak to them and let them know how it made you feel, how you saw things, how you portrayed. Our parents are very blind. They were very blinded to the pain that they were inflicting upon us. The They were very blind to the trauma that they were inducing us with. They have, honestly, they have no idea. They really have no idea. And maybe that's why the poverty mindset is over the inner child card, is that you don't know how to be a kid. You don't know how to let your inner child play. Because she's so fucking fragmented from all the previous stuff. <coughs> Finding your true self. You know, you, she's learning though. You guys are learning and you guys are integrating yourselves. Your ego is learning. Your higher self is really guiding you. But there's a sense of fear that's here too. Could be an obsession that your higher self is trying to draw you away from. But the, the fear from the ego, we can't put that down. We can't let that go. Are you crazy? So there's a need to overcome that. And maybe you feel really cold. Maybe you feel like you, you're coming from a place of an artificial heart. Or you're very distant from the emotions. Kind of numb, okay? This is just a masquerade. You know, there's uh, coping mechanisms and trauma responses to things. final outcome is that you've got the strength you need okay your skeletons you're gonna have to open that closet you're gonna have to let them out you've got to let them out and it's not fun okay i promise you it'll be okay though and it's for the betterment and once you do it you're gonna feel so much better you're gonna have this <laughs> i can feel it for you already and it's gonna be such an overwhelming emotion of just like releasement. Like you ever been in a situation that's really hanging on your chest or your shoulders 
and then something happens and you're and it's a big relief and you're like i am so relieved that weight is lifted off my shoulders you know it's gonna feel like that but times like a thousand okay heartache over what you no longer have there's heartache over what you no longer have which is your childhood right you can't go back and redo your childhood but you can let that fucker out and play go get dirty play in the mud make mud pies what did you used to do when you were a kid you're gonna be drawn to do it anyways Well, I'm glad I paused it because the thumping I heard was my honey home. He's home way early today and he scared the ever-loving piss out of me. I opened my door to go see what was thumping in my house and he's standing on the other side of the door. And I screamed so freaking loud. It's not even funny. Okay. Heartache over what you no longer have. We were talking about the inner child. And then we've got shrewdness and resourcefulness, and especially in business but I feel like there's a sense of shrewdness around the person you know um, from your childhood and family wishes come true so maybe this is just something you want to be you're you're creating through the ashes and it's just something you want to be out on the table maybe it's something you want to be out on the table but not necessarily because you don't want to make that person feel bad maybe you're not wanting to hold them accountable or make them feel like shit and and you know there's there's some easy non-harsh ways to go about communicating and you can always always ask your spirit team for the empowerment and the help okay but it'll help when once you lighten your load <clears throat> do it for you because you need it. Your inner child needs it. Your inner child needs to be heard. Or your shadow self needs to be heard. This is all I have for you, group two. I hope it helped my loves. Until next time, love and light. Alright, group three, last but not least, those of you that chose reflection or the evil queen, you deserve sugar, not salt. You could have been depicted as the villain in the household, you know, the bad guy. I know parents like to play good cop, bad cop, right? But you know, it says you deserve sugar, not salt. And salt can be very deceiving because salt looks like sugar and vice versa, right? I'm seeing the pure white snow here. There's a sense of purity. The white sugar, like, um, starting anew. But I got an overall energy for group three. And this card, focusing on the negative. Things not turning out the way you anticipated. Forgiveness of self or others. Everything happens for a reason. Look for hidden blessings. So, with the reflection card also, I feel like you guys are realizing this. You're seeing the hidden blessings in scenarios that were that you were dealt with <clears throat> in previous instances. Let's get clear, concise messages from group three shadow selves, please. Angel spirits and guides, please and thank you. All right, on the bottom of the deck, I've got peaceful among thorns. What's being reflected on the outside is not what's going on on the inside. Alone in the world. Oh, group three. Perchance to dream. There's a parasite here. <clears throat> Anger and chains. What the heck? Okay, group three, my apologies. I did have to pause and come back to you guys um let's get a different take on this here <clears throat> this could be pertaining to a situation right now and for some it's going to be pertaining to your past okay since we do have reflection here but maybe there was a sense of feeling alone in the world growing up. Adolescent years. You didn't dare to hope anything good 
would come of your life for yourself. But we've got like the sense of anger and chains that were developed. This is what you're breaking now. This is what's being released. You're waking the lion on this. And the parasite could be either addictions or obsessions that were formed around the scenario or because of the scenario, but also the parasite could be the thing that's just sucking you dry right now, making you so cynical and angry and kind of volatile, group three. Well, so of course there's trigger warnings, right? <clears throat> Unless it, these are messages from your shadow self. Okay, so self-worth coming out under alone in the world. What about perchance to dream? High Priestess of Fire. Chaos. Yeah. This is inflicting that this is a mental thing here. And, okay. So, there was energies are, or, I'm sorry, emotion is just energy in motion in the body. And when we suppress anger, when we suppress sadness, any kind of lower vibrational thing... It forms, it's, it becomes stagnant energy inside of you. This can create physical symptoms as well. Okay, so the loyalty and the deceit card came out together. I feel like this is your higher self and your ego battling over how to view the situation also. But the energies in motion, when we keep suppressing them, then at one point they're going to boil and they're going to rupture in a way that may not be the best way for either you or the situation involved. You're trying to find your sense of belonging, though, Group 3. Whatever this situation was, it really dimmed your value on yourself. It really dimmed your self-worth. Like, maybe you felt like you were the evil queen and you deserved salt instead of sugar. I know a card flipped over. I felt it. Maybe not. There it was. Courtship. Mm. <clears throat> this could... Okay, so this is a previous love situation for some. Previous relationship. What dimmed you? What dimmed your light, right? But for others, it could be on how you view relationships and how your parents' relationship may be. Okay, uh, there's always talk about healing from toxic relationships, but maybe your inner child is healing from your parents' toxic relationship. And you've got a, there could be some, what, uh, not so great views or insights on how you think love and relationships are supposed to go. There's some form of like lower vibrational conditioning around relationships. We've got false person. Distant horizons is coming over chaos and parasite. So this may have yet to find this may have yet to find you, group three. Just know that whatever it is, you're gonna stay anchor and grounded and look, there's a chain right here. Anger and chains. There's a big freaking chain right here. Whatever it is, you're going to be able to handle it. You're going to be able to overcome it. It's going to happen. You're going to heal from it. You're going to release it. Okay, so bad health. So uh, also, as I was talking about the, the emotions in us creating energy, stagnant energy within us, it can cause physical symptoms too. Worry, stress, guilt can cause physical symptoms. I know I, I used to get... I used to throw up a lot because my nerves were just shot and I would get so anxious and paranoid about stuff. But if you expect, if you expect bad things to happen 
or bad things to come out. So if you're expecting chaos to ensue, if you're expecting you to be in bad health, you're going to you're going to manifest it for yourself. So maybe this is a, a check for somebody who's in this state of mind who's doing worst case scenarios, who's trying to make it seem like the person they're dealing with is a false person. Could be yeah, there needs to be an end that comes to this situation group 3. I'm being drawn to get my tea cards over here. <clears throat> Maybe you're realizing that your parents weren't who you thought they were. There's some sort of realization here and reflection coming. But to know that the most difficult part is over. So whatever this is ensuing and coming towards you, you're definitely going to be able to get through. And you're going to recognize it. You're going to be like, ah, oh, fuck, that's what she was talking about. This is what she was talking about. Maybe you're just going through it right now. Or you just came out of it as well. But I feel like it's a future a future thing for somebody. A stubborn and aggressive person. This could be you. It's probably you. I feel like it's you. <laughs> we all have these things where we're a little stubborn and aggressive. But also I'm being drawn back over here to this focusing on the negative things not turning out the way you anticipated. Forgiveness of self or others. Everything happens for a reason. Look for hidden blessings. And then we have crib. So there's the birth of a conception of a child or a new idea in something. Something is ending so something new can begin. Compliments from and admire and then I've got fair man so you may receive compliments from a man with blonde gray or white hair okay receive it graciously receive it graciously just smile and say thank you and move on <laughs> there could be a sense or yearning for lust here Okay, the High Priestess of Fire. We're going to get the book meaning on that one. Gosh dang, I've got a lot to do after this read. Planning an impromptu trip to the city. My child, you have chosen the symbol of the vampire high priestess of fire, the goddess of creativity and passion. Actually, <clears throat> they're mentioning vampire here, so there could be energetic vampires around you as well. It's someone close to you, I feel, for whoever this is resonating with. If you find yourself exhausted or it's very hard to be around certain people, that's because unknowingly to them they are... They're sucking the light right out of you. They are energetic vampires. Whenever she arrives, she reminds you of your ability to create your own reality and to choose how you handle your, how you channel your energy. If you are restless, call upon the High Priestess of Fire for inspiration and joy and she will release you from the trap of boredom. Fire brings warmth and light, but it also burns when it is allowed to get out of control. Spend your energy creatively, not impulsively, and guard yourself against burning out. Use your fire wisely and let your light shine brightly. There could be a sense of grieving here, or somebody may be grieving. You might feel like this... Oh, okay. Okay, so the person here... It's a masculine energy with the mask on, right? You might feel like they're being very distant from you. It, it could be feminine energy too. You know, there's a lot of females out there who's very masculine, right? But anyways, <clears throat> you know, if it resonates, then put it where it fits or switch to energies accordingly. <clears throat> they may seem really distant and you might be fearing or thinking maybe they're seeing somebody else. Maybe they're thinking about going and seeing someone else. Maybe they want to be alone. 
but what's really going on is there's some sort of grieving and transformation going on in this person okay because the home card came out and it's like maybe they're wishing to go home but I feel like what's being reflected or how you're perceiving the outside is indeed not what's going on on the inside <clears throat> excuse me you might be seeing a lot of rainbows maybe you're seeing a ram and look we've got the fire here and the ram is aries you could be dealing with an aries or it could be another fire sign or have Aries placements. We are in Aries season right now. And we did just have a new moon on April 1st in the sign of Aries. Which was pretty profound for a lot of people. So I'm looking at this expectation. Distant horizons, bad health, coffin. Um, usually they don't. <clears throat> and I don't want to go into if this is somebody who is trying to recover from an illness. If you're wondering whether or not they're going to pass away or not. That's not the situation. I mean, I'm not going to put that out there. You can read it how you want to. That's that's on you and up to you on how you want to receive that information. But what I'm seeing here is that if you're expecting bad things to come in the future, then you, I mean, you might as well hang up your coat. Stop expecting bad things to happen, okay? <clears throat> Try to focus on the positive. Try to focus on the bright, brighter side of things, okay? Maybe that's what you need to lay to rest. It needs to be laid to rest. <sighs> queen of my world. It's time to become the queen of your own world. Fuck the world and what they think of you, okay? It's not all yours to bear either. It's a reminder also that you are empathic. And I mean, I know personally, no matter how much I ask Michael to release me from what's not mine and protect me, stuff still seeps in because you have to be very thorough and detailed with spirit. And stuff can still creep in and you can pick up on collective energies, especially if there's a collective energy in your area of a lot of sense of fear or anger or in this aspect it's grief you know so being mindful it is very necessary to cleanse our energy daily daily it is necessary to drink tons of water and it is very necessary to get grounded as well and you guys you just don't even know how much it would help you everybody just poo poos the chakra idea but it, it's not me it's <laughs> It's spirit saying it is essential. And this rainbow depicts the seven chakras also. It is very essential and very, very beneficial. And a lot of things can be avoided. A lot of things can be healed a lot easier. And doing this and taking. Because this has been the suggestion and the guidance from your spirit team all along. Is cleansing the energy, aligning your chakras, healing the chakras. Protecting the chakras. Somebody is needing to heal the vulnerability emotion too <clears throat> around it. Maybe there's something you're not wanting to dampen your sense of self-worth in other people's eyes by speaking your truth. You don't want because you might feel like you're going to be alone in the world. Like there's nobody else there to understand you. But this is essential for your well-being, too, is what Spirit's saying. There's another card here. Yeah, lighten your load. It's not yours to carry. It's not yours to bear. Also, maybe it's somebody in your household you're, you're holding on to with their anger and chains. You could be picking up on their anger and chains. There's going to be a passion reignited here, either within a situation, a relationship, or... Even just creative endeavors and ideas. Because we do have birth or conception of an enterprise here. Releasing and lightening, lightening your load. But having compassion for it as you release it. Because it's not anybody's fault that you're picking up on these lower vibrational energies. Okay. To see it with love and strength and compassion. And be open to seeing and experiencing and also speaking the truth, okay? This is going to help you with your empowerment and your confidence in things. It's going to open the way to your manifestations. They're going to start streaming in. 
It's going to pave a way towards better financial health for you. It's going to give you more confidence in yourself. And especially in yourself, you're going to be seeing the beauty in yourself. You're really going to be feeling yourself, seeing the beauty in others and things around you. Colors are going to... Colors may be way more vivid right now. Um, your taste could be really, really potent too. Like certain s and smells. <clears throat> and like certain noises are louder than what they normally seem. Like all your sentences are really heightened right now, I feel. Okay. Importantly, to forgive yourself for not seeing it before. Forgive them because they were in the same boat as you. It was just a reflection coming back. And you guys were reflecting off of each other. And it was bouncing back. And each person thought, oh, it's them. They're feeling this way. They're making me feel some type of way. And yada, yada. If that makes sense to somebody. This does involve a commitment. This involves a prior soul contract. Okay? But you're on your path to this fulfillment and this happiness. There's a big transformation going on in this household, though. You could be fixing to travel as well, <clears throat> making plans for a vacation, saving money for a vacation. What big dreams do you have for yourself, group three? <clears throat> There's a lot of cards on the table. There's the home card again. Listening. Reading between the lines of those people in your household, okay? We've got home here. We've got home here. I think I might have had a home card back here somewhere, maybe. There's a new vision. You're summoning something. You're summoning spirit. Summoning these big ideas. Friendly reminder to pay attention to the moon and the moon cycles and how it um, affects your uh, moon sign. Not just your sun sign, but your moon sign. Maybe you're needing to go by your moon sign right now, though. But look. New ideas being birthed and creative. It's a new cycle. Look. Oh, my gosh. Look. Another card about a house. So, this is a strong message for somebody like, about a home if you're wanting to move. The manifestation card came out also. So indeed, the universe is at work. But the more you wonder when, why, how, you know, the further out it is. Doesn't mean it's not ever coming to you. But I feel like the ring, the ring is a circle, right? <clears throat> and so there's an, an ending for a new beginning here. If something is trying to talk you out of doing something with your home, don't listen to it, okay? If there's something negative, like, no, we couldn't do that. Why are you thinking about painting? Why do you want to remodel? Um, maybe you're wanting to sell the home or try to purchase the home or purchase a new home. But there's like this little thing whispering in your ear. I think it's your ego, okay? And there could be a sense of grieving from the ego, too, because there's pieces of your ego that are uh, fading away. Because you're shining more light on that darkness of the ego. And your shadow self is trying to help you with that as well. Because your shadow self might be trying to show you some cold hard truth about your situation or the person you're dealing with. And it might be some information that you don't want to believe. You don't want to be like... You want to say, they could never do that, maybe. I don't know. I feel like there's deeper situation on this group three, but that is all I have for you. I hope it helps, and I hope it resonated, my loves. Until next time, love and light.